Matt Drury, what's up, buddy? What's happening, man? Man, big deal. Mid Midwest turkey chasing. Man, there's no way you can't with a last name like Drury. You just, I mean, you had to just be born. I've been around it certainly a lot. Yes, <laughs> that's no for doubt. sure. But uh, you know, Mark and Terry, obviously, they're they're the goats. Like, I, I if I could learn half of what they know by the time I'm about 50, maybe I'll I'll be doing all right. Well, I will tell you this. You, I will say this. You and Taylor both don't give yourself enough credit because if you look at what the Drury name and the brand has, has been in the hunting industry, obviously I always respect it. So, yeah, not to take anything away from your dad and your uncle. I mean, Mark and Terry have done amazing things. But y'all have taken it to another level of being able to bring the youth. The podcast are amazing. I've always enjoyed you know, the ch chance I've had a chance to be on there with you I guys. So, it. Thank uh, you. So, yeah, I mean, in, in one in one way, absolutely. When you, when you got legendary goats, like you said, they, they're they're amazing. But um, you guys have done an amazing, amazing job. I, I appreciate it. I've always said everybody's kind of got their lane that they that they have brought to the table. So right. it's almost like the X Men or somebody. You have all these different parts that bring a great team together. Yeah. And and Mark and Terry, obviously, the knowledge and and the know how of you know, putting the food plots in, managing the herd, or calling in the turkeys, like, they're, they're just, it's unbelievable the knowledge base that they've kind of gained over the years of of just getting their hands dirty and doing it. Yeah. But, you know, Taylor on the social media, digital side, and then the business element, I try to bring to the table, and everybody, you know, kind of comes together, and it's built a pretty strong business model over the years, and you always hate kind of saying that because it's, it's, it's hunting, and it's the sport that we all love, but on this side of it, there is a, a business aspect to it that, that is uh, correct. That you guys have always done a great job at, and and some of the you know some of the other producers that have kind of risen to the top, they they've had that business mind, you know, to, towards it, and it's not just hunting. That's right. And with that, has it ever been tough just being a jury? Well, maybe you know what I'm saying. Maybe from an expectation, like I I I do think about it. You know, it's like man. The deer that they kill, you know, the, the Mark's turkey calling abilities, Terry, you know, underrated it. I'm not going to live up to that. You know, Taylor's not going to live up to that. What can we bring to the table, you know, to, to Just be you, to be yeah. us? Yeah. So well, y'all done an amazing I, job. I think that's where I focus like on the podcast. It's almost like uh, following along with our misadventures you know, behind yeah. the scenes. Like, all right, what I screw up this week's hunt, you know, how, that's exactly how, how do we learn from it and get better? And I think the audience can appreciate that at least. That format is really nice to be able to sit and chat, have be longer winded. You can cover some things, push the envelope in, in the yeah. conversation a little bit. No doubt. Stuff that's hard to produce on TV. Yeah. The podcasts are amazing. No doubt. So it's been good. No no doubt about it. Well, um, from a standpoint of what y'all had a chance to put together last year, man, any hunts that, that you was into that was pretty cool and unique? Yeah, well, you know, first of all, from a team perspective, you know, we've I think it was a hundred and 31 whitetails across our team, which is a big team, right. but That's 131 whitetails awesome. in the fall, you know, 15 gross boons. Terry killed the biggest deer of his life. He killed a 216 Good on his farm. Night. I mean, so some, some great content there, but for me, like probably the best hunt of the year was with my son, his first whitetail where he was the, the trigger man. And, you know, we had worked up to shooting a wildcat 22 and, yeah. and, and getting used to that. And then shooting the 350 legend and, just kind of getting him accustomed to the recoil and the noise and all that. And he, you know, we went out and we went to dad's for you season. Yeah. And this is great because we don't actually get to hunt much together. Like I, I ha have my own farm that I hunt on and, and a couple leases near St. Louis. Dad's up north and he's got his property. Mark, of course, is mainly in Iowa. Not far away. I mean, a couple so hours. I'm three hours from Terry's place. I'm a good five hours for Mark. Wow, Mark so and Terry spread are two out. hours well, I didn't apart. That. That's yeah, out. so yeah. we don't really get together much through the season. Everybody's kind of on their own, you know, hunting their own deer. On their own ground, yeah. That's right. And um, so we had made a plan. I wanted to be at Dad's with my son Cameron to experience the generational thing. And, of course, the knowledge for Terry to pass down to my son, you know, recovery and blood trailing and all the stuff that, you know, it's just the, the part as a kid I remember doing with Correct. dad. So I wanted to have that shared experience. So we went to, to dad's uh, over youth season in Missouri and um, opening morning. It had been unseasonably warm, as you, as you probably remember yeah, from this fall. That's we right. got a real good cold front. It was Halloween weekend. It was that weekend yes. in the Midwest, and everybody had the great weather. So it was super cold. It was the first real signs of the rut coming through. It was really the first time we saw deer chasing 
and I think that cold weather kind of kicked it off. Yeah. So we put, Dad had the idea to put a decoy out, a doe decoy, to try to stop a buck, whatever. We're like, no, no, no management, no, none of this. It was whatever we were deer came hunting. out. We're deer hunting, back to our roots. And um, so we had a doe decoy out, and we're out of the, one of these old homemade box blinds that he had at his farm. And uh, in a great spot, doe pops out of the timber. And of course, we got four people in this blind. No, five. You know, the camera guys yeah. and it just a, a lot of people. Yeah. So there's not a lot of room, but we got that bog pod and we got the gun on it. And we're facing the decoy with the gun. We thought if we're going to have a shot, he's going to be right here. Yeah. Doe pops out, buck on her, you know, young buck on her trail. They just kind of keep, you know, he's chasing her. She runs, he follows. Doesn't, doesn't pay any attention to that doe decoy. And we're kind of bummed, but all the windows are open. So our scent's kind of going everywhere. And, uh, Minutes, mo moments later, I look over and I see another buck pop out of the timber. I was like, hey, hey, another buck. He comes out, but he's coming from our left, all our entire setups right out front. And so I'm thinking, all right, let's give it a chance, but he's downwind of us. Right. And so, of course, he starts snorting and stomping and getting. And y'all are committed here. We're committed here. And, uh, but he's looking at that doe decoy. So dad was right in that instance. Like it, it kept him interested he kept looking he'd look at us and he'd blow and he'd stomp and finally he kind of jumps off and because he is at like 40 yards he was in boat you know boat Close, yeah. he kind of jumps off and so i pick up the bog pod and i move it to the other window and we get the gun out and at this point as you know you, you know with your sons you, you kind of at a certain point you got to leave it up to them you can't pull the trigger for him and i don't know what he's looking at through the scope so it's up to him, right? And so I kept saying, uh, I looked at dad, I was like, what do you think? And the deer kind of, he's standing there, he's broadside. And I was like, Cameron, you on him? He's like, I'm on him. I'm like, you sure you're on him? You know, and yeah. we went through that back and forth. And finally I was like, all right, pull Let the trigger. He hammered him and he ran out, you know, right out in the into the timber. And uh, we felt pretty good about the hit. We go start blood trailing and, you know, he's, little bitty guys, uh, nine years old, and he's ground level. And so dad and I are trying to teach him how to track. And he's ahead of us. He keeps going ahead. And dad's like, you don't move until you find your next spot of blood. You know, yeah. just keep, that, that way you don't walk over something. And he's like, I'm seeing blood. And he's, you know, blood, blood, blood. And he's so low to the ground, he could see he it. He could see it way better That's than you right. all. So we get into the timber and he's like, well, there he is. And dad and I, and we got two camera guys with us. And we're all like, where? You know, I don't see him. And he's like, right there, the brown thing. You know, it's, it's end of October, everything's brown. Right. So I'm like, yeah, okay, bud. You know, like, well, I don't know like, what he's right, looking at. Yeah. And we go another couple of steps, and I'm like, hey, there he is. <laughs> like, it, so like, he, I just told you, Dad. He blood trailed him. He recovered him. Like, it was just a proud moment. And to experience it with Dad, with, you know, my son, and, and have it all on film, of course. It'll be on 13 this year. It was exciting. So that was, that was a top moment. Now we got another jury that's in the brotherhood. That's exactly right, that's man. That's right. Thanks for sharing that, my man. Y'all continue doing what you're doing, man. Ain't um, nothing like your first you know, kid getting their first deer. That's and, right. Well, we appreciate it. I mean, and you guys. got him hooked, man. Appreciate yeah. what y'all do. Yep, yeah, thank you. Yes, sir.